and uh, good evening from like everyone attendees thanks for joining today's webinar uh, the webinar today's is being hosted by the western new england university we have the uh, guest Brian, who is going to talk about more western new england university and the usa visa and uh, the other stuff uh, we're going to take this session or like first we're going to display the presentation like Brian will be taking care of it later in the meantime if you have any questions related to the USA or admissions or anything you can put into the chat box I uh, will try to cover majority of the questions which have been common this we're not going to cover the questions which are more based on the visas and all because ultimately this will be purely related to the admissions uh, the COVID conditions and many more. So I'll hand over to you, Brian, and all attendees, please enjoy the presentation. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, it is very nice to be here with all of you, um, speaking with you. Uh, my name is Brian Gross. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment Management and Marketing at Western New England University. Um, I have uh, been working in the field of um, international and domestic recruitment in the United States for over 20 years, and I am very, very proud to be uh, partnered with Imperial Overseas, um, a really, really terrific organization that I, I highly uh, recommend, um, a really, really terrific company to work with. So you're in good hands um, as you look to seek advice uh, for your educational journey. Um, I am going to talk to you today about Western New England University, and I'm going to answer all of your questions. Um, but before I do that, I want to um, provide you an update as to what's happening in the United States of America uh, regarding uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and how colleges and universities have been responding um, and how you should be thinking about this information in terms of planning your own educational journey. So I think as we all know, um, in the United States, um, COVID-19 really started to become prevalent around mid-March um, of this year, March of 2020. Um, for many colleges and universities in the United States, that was right around the time of spring break. So Western New England University, like many colleges and universities, decided to send their students home for spring break, um, domestic and international, and then um, hold the rest of the classes for the spring semester online. Um, and what we did for our students that were overseas is we continued to house them and allow them to live on our campus. And we provided them meals and accommodations in a safe manner so that they can continue to take their courses online. And at Western New England University, while this was a new process for us, um, our faculty members worked very, very hard um, in a short period of time to make sure that they could meet all of the accreditation standards to continue so our students could earn credits um, and continue to make progress um, towards their degree program. Uh, most recently, um, just in May, we graduated um, both at the undergraduate and graduate students, um, close to a thousand students who had met their degree requirements. And we continue to have a very strong group of students who are enthusiastic to return to Western New England University in the fall. Um, in the United States, um, the state level government had provided guidance um, to us in the state of Massachusetts as to how we could safely open up in the fall. And so at Western New England, like many other college and universities, we are committed to open it, opening up and having an on-campus experience for our students in the fall, all while, all while protecting the health and safety of our students as our top priority and making sure that we're meeting all of state and federal safety regulations. So just to give you some examples of what we're thinking about and what a lot of college and universities are thinking about, First and foremost, um, at college and universities in the United States in the fall, there are going to be social distancing protocols in place that involve um, students and faculty members maintaining um, six feet of distance from each other, and then also the use of masks and regularly cleaning of our campus facilities so that we could um, ensure that students could still utilize our classrooms and um, all of our facilities um, in a safe manner. The other big topic of discussion that's been taking place is, uh, on college campuses is the use of testing protocols 
tracing protocols, and then isolation protocols. So we at Western New England University know that all of our students, faculty, and staff are going to be required to go through COVID-19 training and then testing prior to coming to campus. And we already have a detailed plan in place that if any member of our faculty, staff, or students were to become ill um, with COVID-19, we have uh, facilities designated uh, that are set aside for those students to be able to live. And we already have a plan and a protocol in place where um, students would be delivered three meals a day and that our, our, um, our health and safety officials would come and visit those students three times a day to check in on their safety, to make sure that they're safe and taken care of. At Western New England University, we have one of the strongest health centers um, really in the Northeast. For our school our size of 4,000 total students, we feel very, very confident that we can offer really strong, cutting edge, um, you know, health and, and, and safety measures for our students um, to participate. We've also, one final note is um, at Western New England, we've been engaging our faculty members in this planning process. So not only are our faculty members um, enthusiastic to be delivering courses on campus, we are prepared, we have de developed contingency plans that if anything were to change in the future, if we were to have to move to remote lo learning at some point in the future, um, our faculty members are gonna be using one common platform and they're going to be continue to deliver a synchronous um, course delivery in a way that is very engaging, that is very interactive, that meets our accreditation standards. And so what I'm trying to say is an important word that you need to be asking any college or university has to do with scenario planning. Because no college, they don't know exactly how things are going to play out. So I guess in some, we could talk more about this, but we, we have um, a full range of scenarios so that we could offer a very high quality education um, in this COVID-19. And um, I do believe that um, the United States still does offer the most high quality um, level of education in the world and that our faculty members still really do stand out um, to offer you the value to strongly considering coming to the United States. So with that said, I'm going to move my presentation and I'm going to talk a bit about Western New England University. I'm going to frame my presentation and talk about both our undergraduate and our graduate programs. And then we're going to end our presentation um, with you asking me any questions that you want to ask me and I, I will address them very candidly. Um, I don't hold back with anything. So with that said, I'm going to move to my presentation. I'm gonna ask um, uh, my colleagues from Imperial Overseas, can you all see my screen that has the picture of the university on it right now? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, you do. So this is a picture of Western New England University and um, just taking you through, um, we are located in Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, we are located about um, an hour and 45 minutes from Boston and about two and a half hours um, from New York City. And I'm gonna start with a little video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a shot to see if this works, um, sharing my screen. But this gives you a sense of um, our student body and our, our student culture and what makes us unique. Um, if, if you can't see this video or if it's choppy, um, one of my colleagues at Imperial, just let me know and I'll stop it and I'll move on, okay? When I came here for my tour, I was just wondering, all these people were smiling at me. I'm like, is there something on my face? And I'm walking around, I'm just wondering why everyone's so friendly and upbeat. walk the 10 minutes to class and see six people that I know. And I think you find yourself part of a broader community and that really forces you to be engaged. We really look at students' holistic development and really pride ourselves on the connections that both faculty, staff, and student leaders make. 
We choose faculty who have excellent teaching credentials and research credentials where they involve undergraduates in the research. It really starts right away with our summer orientation and registration program. Students leave having their course schedule, knowing what the academic support resources are on campus. Most students will tell you that they leave orientation already knowing the name of someone on campus that they can count on if they need help with something. We get to know what all their different needs are, provide the research and internship experiences that they might need to help them be able to apply to grad schools or apply to jobs after undergraduate school. What I love about Western New England University is the small class size. Even starting my freshman year, some of my um, classes were 8, 10, 12, so that personal relationship with your classmates as well as the professor was fantastic. Have applied approach to education. The faculty have been trying very, very hard to bridge the gap between academia and industry, listen to the employers what they want, and graduate the students such that these companies keep coming back and coming back. One of the uh, hallmarks of the college. the students a more well-rounded exposure in this global economy that we live in. And Western New England University College of Business is accredited by AACSB. Whenever I give a tour, I always find the quietest person, because that was me when I went on tour. And so, you know, I head down, mom asking all the questions, that's who I was. So, you know, I kind of find that kid and force him to ask a question. So I usually say, if your head's down, you're getting the next question. So usually you get them going right back up <laughs> after that. If you want to be a student that likes to hide in the back of the classroom of a large institution, this is probably not the place for you. All of our students know all of the faculty. Uh, they're not afraid to go in the office. And, and they hit us with all sorts of questions, way beyond academics. It's so cliche, but I instantly fell in love with the campus the environment. The campus was beautiful. The business school was accredited, and the, I wanted to play football, and Coach Emery really wanted me to play football, so that definitely was a huge part in my decision to come to Western New England. I've actually done my SAP certificate. The certificate looks really good on your resume. I interned last summer, and I said that I had my SAP certificate, and they instantly fell in love with me and said, oh my gosh, SAP, like you're not the teacher or anything, you automatically know how to do it, so. Getting my SAP certificate was definitely a huge benefit and it was great that the school even offered me to be able to do that. The life in the classroom extends into the co-curricular space so that students, you may be an engineering major, but you're living and you're playing and you're in, on sports teams with folks in arts and sciences, uh, colleagues in business. I think it's just the nascent part of this campus to be curious and to want to get engaged. I'm working on the Dingman mouth gag. It's actually a, um, been a project of the College of Engineering for quite a few years. It works in conjunction with a physician at the Shriners Hospital here in Springfield. It's basically the medical apparatus that's used to keep the mouth open during cleft palate surgery. So I was actually fortunate enough to be able to scrub into a surgery and actually see the apparatus used. Honestly, I think that everyone can benefit from coming to Western New England. I mean, there's definitely a plethora of resources around campus that are really available for everybody and that really do cater to everybody. We try to bring all the disciplines together. It adds broadness to the education and it adds depth in special, special ways. To help our students learn what it is to make a life after Western New England and to make a living after Western New England, but also to make the experience here at the university as full as it possibly can be. Coming to Western New England was the best decision that I could have made for myself as far as a career path for the rest of my life. Well, thank you. I, I, um, I hope that you appreciated um, that video. Now let's um, dive in um, and I want to talk to you about some details of the university. Uh, thank you very much, um, Amit, for that, um, for that uh, feedback on an amazing video. So like I had said before, we're, we're in Springfield, Massachusetts. 
Uh, we're in driving distance to Boston, uh, Boston and New York City, which I think is a very advantageous feature of our university. We are a private university, um, and we have four seasons. Uh, we have uh, fall, winter, spring, and summer. So in the summer, it's very hot, um, and in the winter, um, it's, it's very cold. Um, and so, and this is a picture of downtown Springfield, which offers um, lots of different things for our students to do in terms of internships and jobs and, and other things. We are, um, a, we are a 200, uh, we are a 215 acre campus. We're in a suburban um, campus, so we're not in a big city. So our campus is quiet, it's peaceful. There's lots of space for recreation. We have about 3,700 students um, in total. About 2,500 of them are studying undergraduate and the rest are studying graduate students. And we have students from 20, 27 states and 30 different countries um, around the world. Um, in terms of our academics, um, we really do pride ourselves on small class sizes. So if you think about that video, you heard a lot of our students talk about getting to know their faculty members. I know um, in India, it's a little bit different. Maybe you're used to larger class sizes or more standardized tests. Um, at Western New England, our faculty members' main job is to get to know their students and to teach their students, to mentor their students, to help them in research projects. Um, we are a well-ranked university. Um, we are ranked in US News and World Report um, as a top university in the North region. Um, we also, our engineering program is ranked. And as you saw in the, um, in the video, we have AACSB recognition in our College of Business and our College of Engineering is accredited by AVET. So those accreditations are very important. No matter what university you look for, you should be asking about that accreditation because those accreditation agencies, they come into a university and they make sure that the faculty members have practical experience working in their field. They make sure that the syllabuses are regular updated and they also look at our career placement rates. So I know international students are very interested in CPT and OPT opportunities. And it's very important for our faculty members to work in that hands-on manner to help our students um, find those CPT and those OPT opportunities. Excuse me, let me find my cursor here. Thank you. Um, so I wanna talk about some of our undergraduate programs. I see on the videos, people are asking about um, different programs of study that we offer. We offer at the undergraduate level um, over 50 academic programs. Um, we do that through four colleges and one school. So we have a college of business, we have a college of engineering, we have a college of arts and sciences, we have a college of pharmacy and health sciences, and we have a school of law. So let me take you through some highlight um, programs that I think um, will be really interesting to you. Um, in our college of engineering at the undergraduate level, we have a very wide variety of undergraduate majors. We have mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer engineering, we have civil engineering, engineering management, um, biomedical engineering. Um, we also have some of the best labs and facilities um, that you could really ask for um, in the region. And that, that goes to our accreditation standards. Our accrediting agency makes sure that our facilities and that our labs are extremely modern and up to date. Um, five years ago, we invested about um, $40 million into our College of Engineering. So when you walk through the hallways of our College of Engineering, you will see it's much more than just classrooms. It's hands-on labs. It's, it's uh, in biomedical engineering. We have a full simulation, um, uh, um, a full simulation lab. Um, we have um, a club on our campus in the College of Engineering that students actually through mechanical engineering build Baja cars. And then we have a racetrack um, in, the back of our, in the back of our university where students actually race those uh, race cars. So we really do pride ourselves on hands-on. Um, in the College of Business, we also have a wide range of business majors from finance, international business, accounting. Um, you heard in the video, um, talked about SAP. Um, SAP is a form of data analytics and students as part of our business curriculum can actually earn an SAP certificate at no extra charge. And it really helps, uh, as you heard the student in the video um, talk about, it really helps our students distinguish themselves in the marketplace. Um, in our College of Arts and Sciences, um, we have a wide variety of majors from uh, criminal justice to psychology um, to neuroscience. 
Um, one of our most popular programs for international students is pharmacy. We have a college of pharmacy and health sciences. Um, it's actually a two-four program where students do the first two years in pre-pharmacy and then the next four years in, in the, the college of pharmacy. And we're also very distinctive in that we have a school of law. So undergraduate students could do um, a political science or a law and, law and society major, and then um, even transition to our law school if they're interested. We have master's programs um, in, in the law school as well. And we'll dive more into that. I'm sure you'll have specific questions. Um, I see some questions in the chats about our, our requirements to get into these programs, and we'll get into that um, in, in, a, in a little bit. So what are our distinctive features? Um, at the undergraduate level, um, you, you heard from one of um, our employees, our, our dean of first year students. There are very few universities in the United States that put as much care and attention um, in the first year experience as Western New England University. Um, every new incoming student that comes to our university is paired with what's called a peer advisor. Um, that peer advisor is typically a junior or a senior and they do over 150 hours of volunteer training and they will be there by your side to answer any question that you have um, about your transition to the university. So they will help you with your course selection. They will help you um, find a place to live, whether it's on campus or off campus. They'll even help you make friends, you know, and develop a personal plan. Um, we also surround our new students with a team of advisors. So you have your peer advisor, you also have your professional advisor. We have a professional advising center that helps students make their schedules or change majors. We also have an academic advisor. So at Western New England University, you'll be paired with a faculty expert from day one. They're going to ask you, what is, what is it that are your career goals? What do you want to accomplish? Where do you want to work? What kind of industry do you want to work? They're going to help you build a resume really right from the very beginning so that you could start planning for those outcomes that you want to achieve. And then very importantly about that faculty advisor, they will hopefully become a, a really important industry contact. You know, as you work hard and you earn good grades, you will have this faculty member who will become a mentor for you. So um, we have a very large network for internships, a large network for support. And I will say the other thing that makes Western New England University very distinctive is when you look at the entire United States educational system, there are very, very few universities that have fewer than 4,000 total students like Western New England has, but yet has the variety of academic majors that we have from engineering to business to law to computer science, you know, to analytics. Um, and so what that means for us at Western New England and ultimately for you is we pride ourselves on interdisciplinary. We know that where the, the world is heading is not just having a major in computer science or not just having a major in mechanical engineering, but really pushing students to um, choose interdisciplinary options, um, pharmacy and law, business and engineering, you know, or just a few examples. But when, we, when you come to our campus um, and let's say you say, my, my interest is in engineering, you're likely going to have a faculty member or an advisor to say, are you sure you want to just study engineering or do you want to combine a major and form an engineer, a major in business and engineering so you can really separate yourselves out in the marketplace? And we really pride ourselves here on allowing students to develop a customized curriculum um, that's going to help um, advance you and your goals. Um, at the graduate level, um, some of our distinctive features um, we actually offer, we work on um, four different entry points. So we have terms, um, one in September, January, April, and July. And we really do pride ourselves on allowing students to kind of get through our program in an accelerated format between 15 to 18 months on average. And at the graduate level, we offer um, our degree programs in business and engineering. Um, you can do them fully online. Um, so if students, let's say this fall, are not able to get their visas, you can start a graduate program at Western New England and do it all online. Um, we can start this summer, we can start this fall, we can start next January. So we have lots of flexibility. You could also, if you receive your visa, um, come to the Western New England campus, live on our campus as a graduate student, engage in faculty research that's happening on campus, and you could actually go to a classroom um, and even either engage in a, engage directly with a faculty member in class, or you can do what's called hybrid. So you can do your classes online 
while you're on campus. And we do meet all of the requirements for students to receive a visa. So I think that online and traditional classroom interaction uh, really distinguishes Western New England and provides a very good opportunity um, for you to consider one of our graduate programs. Um, in terms of student life, um, about 80% of our students live on campus. I think you saw that in the video. We have lots of clubs and activities. We encourage all of our students, uh, whether they're students from India, students from China, students from Nepal, from Nigeria, um, and of course from, from uh, 30 different states in the United States, to meet each other, to engage with each other, to connect with each other. Uh, one of our most popular clubs on campus is we have a gaming club on campus that we call WARP, and our students are very active with uh, online gaming. Um, we have lots of sports on campus. Um, we give students the opportunity to form their own club. So if you want to form a cricket club and do cricket intramurally or swimming or water polo, uh, we, we have different opportunities like that um, available as well. And we also offer very, very nice housing accommodations um, on campus for students who may want to live on campus. So I want to talk about the application process. Um, you know, I see there's a lot of questions um, on there about our application process. Um, you can apply either via our online application or through the common application. Um, if you apply um, through one of the consultant groups that are on the webinar today, um, through Imperial Overseas, we will waive your application fee. So that's 40 US dollars saved right there. So that's a benefit of, of working um, with, with one of your consultants um, and as a part of participating in this webinar today. Um, we work on rolling admission, so I know turnaround time is very important. Um, at the undergraduate level, we will turn around your admissions decision within two to five business days, very quickly, once you have a completed application. And at the graduate level for a master's um, or PhD program, we will turn your admissions decision around in two to four weeks. And we do not require any sort of external evaluation, so no WESA evaluation. Um, we will do the evaluation in-house. So we want to make the process easy. Um, for you. Um, here's a list of our required materials. I'm going to give this, this presentation um, to my colleagues that are hosting this webinar so they can share this with you. This is not secret information. It's all up on our website. Uh, but at the undergraduate level, we uh, require official secondary transcripts. Um, we will accept a scanned copy, um, um, an essay or a writing sample. Um, we do require um, proof of English language proficiency, and I'll, I'll let you know what our standards are. Um, of course, uh, along with an affidavit of support and a bank statement. And then at the graduate level, we require official post-secondary transcripts, um, two letters of recommendation, a resume, um, two essays um, for, for our business programs only, um, GMAT for our business programs, but for our engineering programs at the graduate level, we do not require GRE. So that's important to note, uh, proof of English uh, proficiency, and then also the bank statement and letter of support. So again, um, I don't expect you to memorize all of that. I expect you to work with your consultancy directly. Um, that This is why that I'm here, um, because you have some of the best, most well-trained professionals, really, in the, in the entire industry that will help guide you through the program to come to Western New England University. So I want you to utilize their resources and their expertise. So here's our admissions criteria. Um, and in the background, just so you see, this is a, a, a picture of our campus when it snows out. Um, we do like to tell people it, it snows here in, in the New England region. It's beautiful. Um, it, it gives lots of opportunity for, for recreational, uh, for recreation, um, but, but it's cold. So um, I've been to India many, many, many times um, over the years, and um, it never gets nearly as cold as in India as it does um, at Western New England. For undergraduate degrees, we are looking for the equivalent of about a 2.5 GPA. Um, however, our academic programs vary um, depending on the program you apply to. So for our College of Engineering and our pharmacy programs, um, our criteria is a little bit higher. Some of our other criteria are um, our GPA is a little bit lower, as low as 2.5 GPA. We do do a holistic application review. So we do read everything that you send us. And if we have any questions um, about anything that we read, we'll, we'll contact you directly and we'll ask you. So um, we'll, we'll work with you directly. Um, we want a strong math and science background. And then I see um, a lot of questions on the chat about English language proficiency. We do um, accept Duolingo. 
Um, we know that there are some challenges due to COVID-19, so we're looking for a 47 on that Duolingo, um, a 79 on the IBT TOEFL, six on IELTS for undergraduate, a 6.5 for graduate. Um, we are test optional um, at the undergraduate level, so you do not have to take SAT or ACT for any of our programs, um, including engineering or pre-pharmacy. So that's another benefit to consider in Western New England. You have to meet English language proficiency. You do not have to take the SAT or the ACT examination. Okay, I know there'll be some questions about this and we could come back to this slide if we need to. Um, I also know that um, tuition and fees and funding is very important. Um, here's an overview of our undergraduate um, tuition and fees. Um, I do wanna really emphasize the fact that at the undergraduate level, we offer merit scholarships, excuse me, um, up to $22,000 per year. So over four years, you could actually earn up to $88,000 in academic merit scholarships. I am gonna work very closely um, with your consultants on this call, um, with the hosts of this call, um, to make sure that we're able to work on a one-on-one -on -one basis to maximize your merit scholarship. So it is my goal to really award you the highest scholarship possible. Now, it is based on your grades, it is based on you know, the materials that you submit us, but we wanna try to cut that, those fees down as much as we possibly can. At the graduate level, we don't offer merit scholarships, but we try to keep our cost per credit down as low as we possibly can. So um, in the College of Business for our MBA program and our Master's of Science in Organizational Leadership, and also for our Master's of Science in Accounting, we're at $892 per credit, uh, or excuse me, yes, at $892 per credit. And in the College of Engineering for our MS in Electrical, Mechanical, for our PhD programs, we're at $1,168 uh, per credit. We do at the graduate level, um, we offer some associateships, some opportunities to work with graduate faculty members to engage in research, um, particularly at the PhD level um, where there is some funding available. Um, you do need to apply for that. And when our um, graduate um, faculty members review your applications, we will select certain students for additional graduate funding to, to, um, to engage in in some, of, in some of these research projects. Um, one very new program that we're unveiling now is we have a new Bachelor of Science degree in construction management. Um, so that's available for this fall. And then next year, we're gonna be um, um, unveiling a PhD program in construction management. So if construction management is interesting to you, it's located in our College of Engineering, but there's a lot of crossover with the courses in our um, College of Business, in our management. So it's a combination of management and engineering, a very, very exciting new program that we're offering at Western New England University. Um, we do offer a virtual tour. I know um, the video that I showed you um, gave you kind of a little bit of an overview of our campus and our culture. Um, but you can definitely log on um, and at your own time, I'm not gonna take you through our virtual tour, um, but you can kind of do that um, at your own leisure. Um, Rachel Lampson is our Associate Director of International Admissions. Her contact information is up there. So I want you to take her email address. You can see there um, here in yellow, rachel.lampson at wne.edu. She can answer, you know, she could look at all of your materials ahead of time, you know, give you information. Um, she'll get into a dialogue with you. Um, one of the things that, you know, I really want to, you know, promise and say is that many college and universities will say, oh, you know, we really care about our students. And then, you know, they email the university and you don't get a response. Um, if you email us, we will respond to you. We really care about our students. We want to work with you. We want to answer your questions and give you um, honest and accurate information. So I've talked a lot. Um, I could continue to talk a lot, but I am mindful of the time and I wanna give you um, an opportunity to ask me questions and um, I will answer them to the best of my ability. And, and if I can't answer them, then um, you know, we'll, we'll make note of it and we'll get you the answer to your question. So, um, so, so yeah. I, uh, for yeah. this, uh, Uncle Bhai, Amit Bhai take over um, a question. That this yeah, sure. Have. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so thank you, man, for the amazing presentation, and it was a really nice, detailing video. Majority of questions that I was been seeing in a chat box are been kind of answered, like uh, GPA requirement, uh, English requirement, 
uh, one uh, interesting question I would like to ask that is uh, this hybrid uh, study, like as you mentioned, that maybe the studies would be in a fall, would be hybrid mode. So yeah. In this scenario, there would be any uh, fees redemption or something like uh, would be provided? Would you comment on this, please? Yeah, sure. So uh, what it means is actually, um, it, it actually, in its ideal sense, in order for a student to receive an I-20 form and to receive a student visa um, to come to the United States for a hybrid program, we need to pr guarantee the U.S. government that at least 51% or more of the classroom instruction will be offered um, on campus. And then the United States government allows international students to take up to 49% of a degree program doing online courses. And so what our hybrid model means at the graduate level is if a student wants to receive a student visa for one of our graduate programs, we can issue an I-20 and the student will receive their visa, they'll come to the United States, they'll you know, be a full member of the community. We will then offer courses on ground. But while we're offering those courses on ground, they're also being recorded and they're being streamed online. And so our students could actually come into a classroom and, and watch you know, a lecture in person. Or let's say we have some students that live like in the city of Hartford, Connecticut, which is about a half an hour away. So for maybe 40 or 45% of their program, because they're at the master's degree, they say, all right, I'm going to stay in my apartment in Hartford. And for this week's courses, I'm going to just um, dial in online. And so they're still listening to the online course. They're still getting that direct interaction via Zoom, like we're doing now. But they don't actually have to come to they don't actually have to come to campus. So our hybrid model is a synchronous model, meaning the students are going online and actually watching the, the faculty deliver the class um, while they're doing it. And I, I think that's a unique feature. So some students choose to do all in-person classes, and you can do that. You could come to classes for our master's degree and do them all in person, but other students really benefit. Maybe they live a little bit further away and just want to save them travel money, or um, some of our master's degree students live together in an apartment off campus, so they will just stream a course together and just kind of all participate and watch it together, um, or they will come to campus and, and watch the, the course. So it just offers some flexibility. Does that help? Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's uh, uh, a good response. Yeah, uh, well, the uh, next one. Sure. If I could just say one thing, though, if if it turns out uh, that students are unable to receive their visa and come to the United States, I think the good thing about our master's programs is that you can stay in India and start one of our master's degree programs um, and and do it online, and then know that when you can get your visa. You can then come to the United States, get your visa, and you can just continue seamlessly. Uh, we're, we're used to doing that, so it would, not, it would not be hard or challenging for that transition to take place given the circumstances of COVID-19. Right, right. That would be definitely a really great option for the students who strongly listen to their education videos. Uh, with that said, like, we'll... I'll, to ask that, do you accept 15 year of education like in India, what happens that some university do offer only three year of bachelor rather than four year of bachelor. So after high school, if they have three year of bachelor, 15 year of education, do you yeah. accept for engineering and uh, MBAs like for graduate admissions? Um, yes, we do. For, for engineering, we do. Um, for, for business, because of our AACSB accreditation, we cannot accept the three year BCom. Yeah. And if the university has been falling from make a accredited or, or something, does it help anything for getting selected, like waiving this year of education? Um, we can take that. The, the thing that we could look at is work experience. And um, we could certainly look at that at a case by case basis. It's hard for me to give a general answer, but depending on the student's credentials and the institution that they come from, um, we have the ability at the graduate level to take files to the graduate review committee and they could they could evaluate and, and potentially they might potentially add some uh, prerequisite additional prerequisite courses 
that students might need to take in advance of starting their degree. Uh, one more question that in this uh, situations like uh, GMAT and this asset has not been happening in India. So have you guys been offering any waiver admissions like if the students are not having GRE or GMAT, they can apply for graduate admission? Well, GRE is not required for any of our programs. So, so that's good, you know, for the College of Engineering. Nobody needs to worry about GRE for any of our programs, including PhD. Um, for GMAT, we are following the situation very closely. And unfortunately, we, we have to rely on um, AACSB to provide guidance about waiver. And so we are hoping to have some clarity um, soon regarding our ability to potentially waive um, the GMAT for, for business programs. But um, the institution does not have the ability to just waive that on their own. And so we, we expect guidance shortly and, and I'll work for, I'll work with um, Imperial Overseas and, and the other organizations on this, on this call to provide you an update as soon as I can. Uh, that's I, I do uh, think there's a- One more question that like- Sure, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Actually, I was asking that um, still like, in India, many of the board, state boards haven't declared the results like of 12th grade. So those students can apply for on the basis of 10th and 11th grade of their marks or they'll have to wait till 12th grade marks it. Yes, they can apply. Did you hear me on that one? Yes, we could. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I do see some questions on the thing about the um, explaining CPT and OPT. Um, would it be okay if I went in with a, a brief explanation of CPT and OPT? Is that okay? Yes, that would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Okay. Um, CPT stands for Curricular Practical Training. And um, what CPT is, is an opportunity for F1 student visa um, holders to acquire an internship during their course of study. So um, there are certain companies or organizations that are willing to allow a student on an F-1 visa to gain some practical experience. These experiences are sometimes paid. Um, most times they are unpaid, but it's a great chance to build your resume and to build professional contacts. After you graduate, depending on the field or discipline that you graduate in, you have anywhere between one and two and a half years of what's called OPT, which stands for optional practical training. And it's a choice, it's your choice if you want to after your degree program to seek an opportunity to work and gain experience in the United States prior to returning home. Now, OPT opportunities are competitive and they are especially competitive now um, given you know, COVID-19, you know, um, so, you know, but um, we do, um, in our Career Development Center at Western New England University, we have specialists that try to bring companies that are open to and willing to sponsor students for OPT um, to hire them, because we know that's very important for our students to try to get OPT, CPT, and OPT opportunity. So we cannot guarantee you that you will get one of these opportunities, but if you work really hard um, and uh, work really hard to build your resume, then that becomes, um, that, that becomes a possibility. The other thing at Western New England University is we try to hire international students for on-campus jobs because we think that's a very important opportunity. Um, we think that's a very opportunity, great opportunity to build business contacts and to make friends. So um, for the last six years I've been at Western New England, we hire four students every year to work in our international admissions office. And these students have become some of my closest and most trusted you know colleagues and people that we really count on and it really becomes an important experience and so we, we hire students um, at various jobs um, all across our campus in the dining hall and our tutoring center and so it's an opportunity for you to work on campus um, i see another question about cpt being available for graduates graduate students and the answer to that is yes um, it is available but you know it's it's a competitive process that you have to seek out and we will help. Okay, that's perfect. I guess we had completed with all the possible questions and uh, 
So all attained is like if you have many other questions, you can obviously reach to us and we have to ask and guide you further for each and everything about standard admission requirements. Like you already mentioned, you have been accepting Duolingo and the ILTS. So many options have been available for this uh, to appear and uh, satisfy the English language requirement. Uh, GPA, everything has been covered in this slide will definitely give students like on one on one basis if you have a certain increase and uh, that is uh, it I think a very amazing lesson yeah, we have... had all detailed yeah thank you Brian uh, for the session uh, we from our side and from our uh, from Gujarat, we kind of have a lot of students coming in with consistent viewers and, and, and consistent questions. Uh, obviously, everybody is worried uh, due to the COVID-19 situation, uh, but we are here holding fort and we are looking at, you know, getting things back to normal or closest back to normal and um, hope that, uh, you know, um, things go in and uh, we see, uh, we meet you soon. In fact, I'm looking forward to meet you in December. Yeah, that's me too. And, and I want to assure the students on this call that we in the United States are very optimistic. We're planning very thoughtfully and carefully, but we are optimistic that things will return to normal. We are planning to open in the fall. I know the visa situation is, um, you know, not exactly certain now, but it will become certain. And I want you to feel optimistic too, that you can still work um, actively to achieve your dreams and come and study in the United States. And that there's lots of people like me and my colleagues and at many other universities that feel the same way. We want students from India to come and study at our universities and we want to provide you a very, very positive experience on this campus. Um, and and we, we are participants in the You Are Welcome Here scholarship, so we have those scholarships available. And um, I, I look forward to um, hopefully, um, you know, welcoming you all to campus. Thank you, Brian, for that and taking out time for us. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's been my honor to, to speak with all of you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so thank you, attendees, and a good night. And uh, have a nice have day. Have a good day, Brian. Sorry. <laughs> have a nice day. Good day. Bye.